to Fred in the Shed. And another little steam video here. And this time we have got a Mamod SE2 stationary steam engine. Pick this one up on eBay. This was a sort of house clearance job um, guy that was selling it. Didn't know anything really about it, but said it was all original, which, which it is. Um, comes in its original box. This is maybe what it would look like in the sort of showroom. It isn't gonna look like anything like that now. And I don't believe this they were sold all sort of highly polished anyway. Um, I had a little bit of difficulty sort of trying to find a, the date for this. I believe it's somewhere in the sort of 1960s. So it's possibly, it is gonna be over 50 years old. Um, you know, they sort of didn't really change the design too much. I haven't got the uh, sort of mess kind of wick burner. I've got the sort of mess sort of little uh, sort of wire wall burner. Um, box is falling apart, but at least it's come in the box. And uh, yeah, here it is. And it, it's in need of restoration. I did know that when I, I sort of bought it. I was quite happy to have a go at restoring this little engine. Let's go and get it out of the box without damaging the sort of box. And here we go. And uh, yeah, as you can still see, it's well, you know, it's well used. Um, the sort of boiler housing here very much sort of sort of burnt off and you've got lots of sort of sort of tarnishing there on the sort of boiler itself but everything is complete which is you know it's quite important like i've said before i'm not you know, i'm not an expert at doing these sort of venues i've only just restored one of the sort of roadsters but uh, basically you know i'd say to anyone if, if you're watching my video and you're sort of thinking of maybe getting one one of these yourselves try and make sure that everything everything is actually uh, included, that things haven't been sort of broken or removed or that it hasn't been modified in any way. Because although you can buy these individual components, some of these are still made new. Uh, they are quite expensive, they are quite pricey and, and the cost of the parts alone will exceed <laughs> the cost of the engine, what it's worth. This one does come with a little pan, a little meth, a uh, little meth boiler there. And once again, it's important that uh, if you can get one of these with the kit as well, because you can buy these new, but again, they're quite quite expensive compared to what they, uh, the kit costs. I, I paid 50 pounds for this in 2019. In, and obviously it works, apparently well, it's, he thinks it works. Um, he said he hasn't sort of tested it, but everything's kind of free and easy. Obviously needs a cosmetic sort of restoration. In a restored state, um, they're twice that at the moment, they're going for sort of around about 90 to 100 pounds. So these things are sort of going up in sort of value. So yeah, I, I straight out of the box, I have had a little quick look at it. I'm quite impressed actually. As I say the piston feels nice and free and easy. Obviously it needs to be oiled. It's uh, everything is it's as dry as a nun's chuff at the moment. Nothing's sort of been touched. It's obviously it's been in someone's loft for quite sort of some time. But yeah, everything appears to be exactly as it sort of should be. You've got the boiler there, we have the sort of the, the whistle. I uh, understand that these leak, so we'll, we'll find out uh, when I sort of fire mine up, which we're gonna do that in a moment, gonna fire it up for the first time. Got the uh, safety valve there, and uh, yeah, I have checked that it is sort of free and easy. I'll have to probably get a new seal because it generally sort of leaks from there. And then we've got the steam feed pipe. It's nice to sort of see on this model that it is actually sort of screwed into the boiler and it's not soldered, which was, which was the problem I had on the sort of Mammoth Roadster. If you've not seen that video, by the way, I'll leave a little pop-up at the end if you want to see me restore a 77 Mammoth sort of Roadster. And the steam feed pipe, they sort of, it's a bit strange, but they sort of, they kind of loop it back under the sort of boiler there, back under the firebox. So it's almost like they supercharge the steam. The steam sort of comes out and it gets the kind of second heat as it sort of uh, comes out of the sort of feed there into the sort of piston. So it's almost like a sort of supercharged kind of arrangement. A bit sort of, yeah, a bit odd that they sort of did that. And uh, this particular model, what I like, although I don't know a great deal about them, but this one has got the sort of regulator valve there, so like a throttle control, which uh, again, that feels quite nice and sort of smooth. So you can kind of turn down the, uh, the sort of speed at which this flywheel spins around. And that's one thing I kind of don't like so much about the sort of the roadster, if you like, there is no throttle control on it, um, which means that the engine is banging away at its full, full speed and, it's kind of got a little bit of knock and I don't think they run particularly well flat out. I mean, there's no sort of, sort of, I don't know if this has got, this has got any bronze bearings in there, but they, they do knock when they run quite fast. So it's quite nice to sort of, once you've got them running, to get them running at a much sort of slower speed. And we'll be able to do that with the sort of reg the throttle regulator. So there you go, straight out of the box. I'm quite impressed. 
Um, I kind of think that even though you can buy these engines today, which is lovely in 2019, I mean, it's, I think they've sort of maybe the quality is, I think these are slightly better. I'm noticing just looking at it, for example here, if I kind of zoom in a little bit, if my focus will allow me, bear with me, there we go. So yeah, I'm just looking at on the sort of crankshaft here. This, it looks like a piece of sort of solid brass and it's got the sort of mama sort of logo there. Now on my later Roadsters, both Roadsters from the 77 and the 19, this has been sort of just replaced with a stamped out piece of metal. So this will polish up really, really quite nice and I uh, might even have a go, possibly, might even have a go at trying to sort of, you know, very carefully paint around that to sort of highlight that. So it just sort of shows a little bit more pride that went into these sort of early engines that they sort of did the uh, kind of logo there on the sort of crankshaft itself. I think that was possibly lost by the time you got into the sort of 1970s. Obviously things at a cost, you know, at some board meeting, someone decided that that would just become a stamped out piece of metal. And I wonder if the people, that, the guys that put these together, because bearing in mind, you know, this, this design goes back, I say, to the 1950s. So it wasn't long after the war. And obviously there was a lot of sort of, you know, pride in engineering in sort of UK. You know, it was probably at sort of maybe our peak, if you like, of sort of engineering. Uh, before it all got farmed out to China and sort of Malaysia and Hong Kong and things like that. So I wonder if at a meeting someone sort of said, oh God, you know, the company's going down the pan because they're now doing away with the sort of the stamped kind of brass sort of, or the, not the stamped, but the sort of the, the machines kind of sort of brass kind of crankshaft there. And we're going over to sort of cheaper components. I don't know. Was that the sort of, they thought it was the beginning of the end on waffling? allow me. So um, managed to is will we to take it to oil it? Gonna give it a nice sort of oil, make sure that uh, all the bearings and the journals and the piston is like sort of full of oil. I do believe there's an oil feed little uh, hole there as well, which is quite useful. And then yeah, gonna fire it up for the first time and uh, see if it's got any leaks. Quite looking forward to that, getting quite excited. It's gonna be a long video by the way. Um, so, uh, you know, stick with me and uh, enjoy it with me as well. So cheers, thanks for this part and uh, we'll get on to firing it up. Just going to fill the boiler now, preheated the water, not using distilled water because I'm going to uh, sort of put some white vinegar through the boiler anyway and descale it. Um, it's a bit pretty much the same system as the 77 Roadster whereupon there's no sight glass. It's just a sort of bit messy really, you just have to fill it until it sort of over comes out of the overflow and then put in a little sort of tap. So uh, yeah, you know, just, just fill it up. There she blows. <laughs> like I say, it's a little bit messy compared to sort of the sight glass. It uh, does run everywhere. But so uh, yeah, that's full up. So let's get the uh, rather corroded little stopcock in there. At least it's come with the originals. These can often get lost and people put in sort of bolts and all sorts of things. So at least we've got the original there. And the safety valve, of course, Okay, he needs a new washer. It uh, does seem to work though, which is very important. And we don't end up sort of blowing the boiler. So that's it, it's full of, full of water. Just a question of sort of uh, lighting the meth burner and see if it runs. Okay, that's a light. That in. And now we wait just for the uh, steam pressure to build up a little bit. It's got that nice meth smell which you don't get with the wax tablets, funny enough. That reminds me back to when I was a kid. Um, I didn't have one of these but my friend did. He used to fire it up and you get that kind of rather sort of um, musky smell of sort of meths. So here we go. Got a little bit of sizzling, a little bit of leakage here out of the sort of whist whistle. So here we go, we've got some pressure there. Lots of water coming out there, so the boiler's quite full. But, uh, oh yeah, it seems to be uh, sort of getting up to sort of temperature now. Right. Let's see if it goes for the first time. Oh, 
down in bed. Slow it down to a nice speed. That's with a regulator. It's really good there. And there she goes. So I've got to say, for a first run, I'm quite impressed with that. It runs really nice, actually. It runs quite smooth. I think these older ones are slightly better quality, I think. But so I'm not going to run it too long, because I say, I don't know how, how, how much oil I've got managed to get into the piston there. And yeah, yeah, just a little leak there on the whistle. It's going to need sort of sorting out. But the safety valve seems to have settled down. And a little tiny leak there on the fill. Uh, on the fill. So yeah, a little bit of work to do, but it runs. It runs really, really nice. <laughs> Really quite excited. So just cosmetically now, just got to restore it back to its uh, original, its original spec. But uh, yeah, really quite pleased with that. Really think that uh, that runs pretty, really good. But uh, not going to run it too long now. So just going to uh, sort of shut that down, stop it, put it out. So yeah, it's a thumbs up. So we get on with the restoration.